Welcome to our talk. Yes, sir, I can get ups. SDLC automation in a regulated industry, where we're going to be covering some of the challenges that we have encountered on the process of automating many of the pieces of our process and how we have overcome them through a platform-based approach. My name is Juan. I'm working as a tech lead for the DevOps platform engineering team uh, here at Banking Circle. Been doing that for the last couple of years. Before that, I spent another two years and a half also working within the domain of DevOps in a different financial company. And my name is uh, Darius. I'm a, a team lead in our DevOps organization um, here at Banking Circle, having a lot of fun with uh, Juan building a, a DevOps platform. Before that, I spent uh, four years in another financial institution. So I have around seven years uh, in the finance area, six of those in data, and the last one focusing on DevOps at Banking Circle. Now, I assume that most of you haven't heard of Banking Circle. That's because we are a somewhat new bank uh, in the hood. Uh, we got our banking license um, three years ago. And all in all, we have been around for about uh, 10 years. And then the question is, what do we do? Uh, the simple answer is that we do payments infrastructure. So we make sure that if somebody wants to transfer payments across borders, we do it cheap and fast for them. Now, when we got the banking license, uh, there are many rules that we need to uh, follow because we are in a regulated environment. And as many of the other banks, when you first have to uh, apply the um, finance regulatory rules, uh, since we don't have a lot of changes, then we applied the good old uh, solution of throwing bodies at the problem. What this means is that we apply the typical pattern of I have a development team, and then the developers write the code, they hand it over to the testing team, they test the code, give, then they give it over to the QA or the release managers, and finally it goes into um, the operations team. Now, this is required because we have a rule called segregation of duties, which means that the person that writes the code cannot be the same one that operates the code or deploys it in production. We can also summarize it as the 4i principle. We need at least two people involved from different parts of the organization. Now, when we had a smaller scale, we were around 180 in uh, total in the entire organization. It wasn't that difficult because we had two, three changes a day. So people could handle those um, uh, handovers and it was a lot easier to coordinate. But the organization grew. We are now at about uh, 500 and we uh, aim to um, uh, deploy as frequently as possible. And the challenge with the previous setup is that it doesn't scale well. First of all, it takes a long time to onboard colleagues to have the different roles. So the tester needs to understand what's being developed. Uh, then the QA and the release manager needs to understand all the stakeholders and what's being developed and what's being tested, so on and so forth. And then at the end, it's handed over to operations that maybe doesn't really know what's even there because they haven't been part of the process. Now, we are in a fortunate position that we have a lot of smart colleagues around that are very creative. And they want to make their life easier. And with the approach of having all the operations centralized where all the deployments are going through, doesn't help them get what they need if it's a nice to have. It's something that can maybe save them half an hour a day. And what happens then is that they get creative and they come up with in individualized solutions across the different teams that maybe somebody does a manual deployment, somebody else does a YAML pipeline, another person says, okay, here's my code, please deploy it by putting it on this specific server that will then be picked up automatically at some point. That's uh, one of the challenges. And the last one is that if you have things that are centralized, let's say a agent for your um, uh, deployment pipelines and a development team needs a library or something small, if they can't get the help from the centralized team, the operations team, then they will maybe find a way how they can sneak a small piece of code in a pipeline that actually installs that library for them nobody actually knows about it and then they're happy, but that can break somebody else's flow because that library messes up with somebody. So that is what we call shadow ops. And now I'll let Juan say a few words about the solution we came up with. Yes, thank you. 
the first idea in the solution was that we need to standardize all of this. As, as Darius was explaining, having individual solutions to the same problem doesn't scale very well and also requires knowing what is going on. So we decided to have, let's do one thing, let's do it well, and then let's share the thing that we are doing. Let's standardize that across the organization. Then because we always do the same things, we can put a lot of focus on automating those things so that we don't always have to repeat the same steps in a manual way, but rather we just execute whatever is there because it is always the same steps. This also allows us to look at it from the different stakeholders that are relevant to the process. We can ensure that what we are doing is secure. We can ensure that it is compliant with all of the regulations that we have on top of us. We can check the governance of the process if it needs to change, if something needs to adapt for a new team to onboard it, for example, the relevant people are looking at the process and are approving whether or not changes should be allowed or if there should be happening in a different way. And of course, this process is designed by the subject matter experts. If we are talking about pipelines, we can put the guys that know more about pipelines to work on them. If we are talking about infrastructure as code, we can put some infrastructure engineers to look at the, at the process, at the, at the code that we are writing for that, that is then shared with everybody else, and then they can benefit from that. But it was not enough to centralize it because what we also want to do or what we wanted to achieve is that then people actually use that process that we are centralizing. And that's where we uh, came across the platform teams and the, the platform based ways of working. So what we are doing is packaging those processes into little blocks where things are not only automated, but also they are offered so that they can be consumed in a self-service way. And then each of the streamlined teams or each of the development teams can consume these blocks, which again can be pipeline templates. It could be a specific repository to take care of something. It could be infrastructure as code modules. It could be many other things. They put them onto their process and that allows them to build this golden path. That allows them to have a process where there is no manual intervention unless absolutely needed for regulatory reasons. And when there is no handover to another team so that that team takes care of something else. Instead, everything that should be compliant, everything that should be secure, everything that should happen in a specific way, it's coded into the process. And now if we are to take a concrete example, if you remember back in the beginning of the presentation, we talked about the handovers from team to team. Now, one example that we have is these automated changes. What this means is that we've removed a lot of the people that were involved in the process, replaced them with a flow that's defined more or less the same for all pipelines. That first you build, then you test, and then you deploy to various environments. And then we need to satisfy the 4i principle or segregation of duties, as it's called. And that's where we put right before production an approval from the product owner. Now, the beauty about the solution is that the product owner works very closely with the development team. They talk on a daily basis, but he's also sitting in a different part of the organization. So we do have the segregation of duties that uh, the regulators ask us for. And then from a pipeline, uh, what we do is uh, yeah, we get the product owner approval. Then once he approves, we have a stage that goes into our ITSM tool and creates the change ticket. We deploy, we validate in production. And then we have another stage that goes uh, back to the same ticket and says this was fine or this was not fine. It failed for whatever reasons. The beauty about it is that the stages that we're interested in, the ones that connect to the ITSM tool, those are independent from the actual uh, production deployments and the validation. So it can be whatever you want in there. If you deploy Azure uh, app services, if you have PowerShell scripts, if you have Ansible, we don't care. From a platform perspective, we give you these uh, stages. This is the framework that you need to follow. And then the developers are happy and they can deploy very fast. And then the product owners are also happy because they're empowered to approve and release when it makes sense for the business. Another successful example of a part of the process that we have implemented with this platform-based approach is our GitOps feeder flags. When we are releasing code, we are decoupling the deployment of that code and the release of that code by using feeder flags. So basically following the arrow that Darius was showing before, the code is deployed. We also do this in a non-disruptive way using blue-green deployments to ensure business continuity. But then the functionality is not yet released because it's behind a feeder flag. 
And then it is only when the feeder flag is flipped that that functionality is released. What we are doing with these feeder flags is defining them as very simple JSON files that we keep in a Git repository. This means that whatever is in that Git repository becomes the single source of truth. The main branch specifically of that repository contains all the flags for the different services that that team is using and then their current values. This also means that any time that there is a change in this repository, there is a change in the source of truth. Effectively, there is a release of a particular functionality. And this is logged as a commit because it's still a Git repository. So suddenly we have a log of every release um, where we can see what has been deployed. And the contributions to that main branch can only happen through pull request because they cannot happen directly. This means that there needs to be a particular person that creates this pull request. And then there's a different person, again, typically the product owner, that approves this pull request. So we have the 4i principle. We are decoupling who is requesting the release with who is approving it. And all of this is logged naturally as part of this Git repository, just because that's how it works. The moment any change is introduced into master, we have a pipeline that is updating the flags and that is actually releasing the functionality. But there is no extra approval needed on that part. What we are using there is the automated changes. Yes, they are logging into our ITSM tool the fact that we are releasing something, but there is no need for anyone to approve that process or to put any more blockers throughout that. And the beauty of this, again, is that it is a platform-based approach. So we have one repository that includes all of this. Any team can clone that repository, introduce their specific parameters, their specific flag, their specific flags, their specific set of approvers. And then they just would be reusing the same solution that we have based on Terraform that everybody else is uh, using. They would be interfacing it in a very simple way through JSON files. And everybody would be doing this in the same way. It's been a few months where we've been running with these two cases uh, throughout the organization, and we have learned quite a few things. Um, the number one and most important is that people really matter. It's all about the people, people, people. First of all, we need to focus on the user experience. Like we want to make a people's life easier. They should be able to deploy easy and fast to production. And uh, the developers need to be happy. The regulators need to be happy. Our internal audit need to be happy. But the thing is that once we have rolled out the um, automated changes or the GitOps feature flags approach, then we also have to go back and hear like, OK, how is it going? Like, is it smooth? Is the process OK with you guys? Are you stuck in something? Do you not understand like the approvals, maybe how that work and why we have done these specific stages? So there's always an ongoing uh, conversation. Because we want to share it out as a platform, uh, the beauty of the approach is that once we onboard a team, then they talk to their neighboring teams. And if somebody hears like, hey, I heard that you guys are doing that automated changes, which is really cool. Can we also get on it? The thing is, they can help each other because they talk together, they talk frequently. And we are sitting in the platform engineering team preparing the tools, but then how it grows, it's organic. So they can help each other. And it's not dependent only on us to implement it, but also on the teams helping each other. But for this, it's really important that we focus on the documentation, on the public relations part, that we actually go out and we present it. So that first team actually figures out that there is something they can work with. And then uh, as a small conclusion for our lessons learned, it's all about the people, like we need, need to listen and work with them. Then the process is important that it needs to make sense for various uh, organizations. And then the product comes last as the technical implementation is not that complicated. Yeah, and in conclusion, uh, the fact that we need to be compliant, the fact that we need to be secure, the fact that the process needs to be standardized um, doesn't mean that it needs to be slow, that there needs to be a lot of people involved in it or that things need to happen manually. It's actually the other way around. The process becomes more stable and more secure and more compliant because everything is coded and automated. The best way of scaling this so that everybody is following this process is putting it in this self-service way, having a platform-based approach so that everybody can benefit from it. And yes, what we have discovered is that yes, sir, we can GitOps. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of your platform con.